Hello, my name is Andrew, and today we're doing a first impression review of the much requested Vivo Barefoot Tracker Leather Low. So basically, these are like the spiritual successor to the original Vivo Barefoot Primus Trek, and I've had these ones for like seven years. They're really nice because they've got some good water resistance with the leather, a very natural look. I love the design, good protection on the sole, and you can use them for all season. So I've been wanting Vivo Barefoot to come back with a lower cut leather shoe like this, and they finally have. So let's take a look at it and see what's changed. And uh, yeah, the toe box is nice and wide. This is one thing that I like um, versus the old one is that it was just a little bit more pointy. Um, they've added the new toe protection around here, which they have in their new um, all-terrain boots, and it wraps all the way around. It's really nice for waterproofing, like if you dip your feet into a puddle, it just has more protection than when the leather is meeting the rubber right here, but it does add some more structure. So I feel like this shoe, compared to the original Primus Trek, is more like heavy duty. It's basically like a backpacking boot for more extreme terrain, but lower cut for if you want something in um, the summer, you know, where it's just too hot to use a higher cut boot, or you just need more protection than a lower cut shoe would normally offer. Um, so you do have multiple layers in the front, like if you stub your toe on a root or rocks or anything like that, you've got the front guard, then you've got this guard, then you've got this layer as well, which works for waterproofing. Um, like I said, but then in terms of the laces, I think this is a nice improvement over the originals. They're a bit more silky, so they slide through, like when you're trying to cinch them up or when you're trying to loosen the boot up, they just move through um, a lot easier than the original ones. Um, but the eyelets do clench onto them nicely once you snug them up. And then at the top here, I kind of like this. They've added, they have these on their boots. They're kind of like the metal grommets. Um, they're really tough and also it just kind of, the lace like slides through there nicely when you're just kind of pulling the laces tight for that final cinch, you know? In terms of the heel of the shoe, this is a problem area for me with this shoe because when I was walking out, um, I felt just this pressure, you know, on the top of my heels. I have had this happen with some other shoes, um, but unlike the original Primus Trek, which had a really soft material, you know, there's just nothing rubbing here. And I also like the slip-on. I thought that was a really nice feature. Um, and they've kind of gone back to that with something like the Magna FG, which we'll talk about in comparison. But um, yeah, it's a more protective boot, like I said, but I think this is an issue because you can see that it's kind of firm, you know, there's just not as much give here and it will loosen up over time as leather always does. But um, I just tend to have kind of like bony ankles, you know, so um, I felt some pressure here. And if you have higher ankles or someone with maybe like, you know, higher body fat percentage than me, you may have more padding. It may not be an issue for you, but it's definitely something worth noting. Um, the lockdown of the heel felt really good. There's kind of a heel cup in here. Um, it's not gonna wear out anytime soon. The materials are really tough. There's a soft leather lining on the inside of the shoe, which feels nice. And then on the bottom, it's cotton. It's kind of hard to see because it's black in there. But um, overall, some good width. I didn't feel like I was limited anywhere in the shoe. They probably won't work some of um, extra wide feet, but pretty much everyone else it should fit. And you can get a little bit of pressure on the top just because the leather is thicker and more durable, but I didn't have as much an issue with it on this shoe as I did with the uh, AT boots, which I thought put a little more pressure. So yeah, not really a problem there for me. Um, in terms of the sole, it's 6.5 millimeters. So it's about the same as the original um, Primus Trek, but there's just not, quite as much flexibility. You, ha you do have to put a little bit more pressure um, to get it to bend, especially up here. Like this is the area where it doesn't have quite as much flexibility. In the middle, there's a lot of really nice flex, um, but then you get to the heel. And part of that is just because the lugs are a little more beefy. It's kind of similar to like the escape sole in terms of um, being designed for um, use on a more rugged, rocky terrain. And it does provide a lot of really nice protection. You can hear, just a good amount of density um, to the tread. But when you have lugs that are bigger like this, it does you know, impact the flexibility a little bit. There's definitely good flex um, vertically and some good twist as well, but yeah, just something to note. And when you're walking on pavement, I feel like the bigger lugs, you can feel them a little bit. So I might put something like a thin wool felt insole in here because it doesn't affect the ground feel, but it just gives you a little more padding, just kind of like smooths out those bottom lugs. And I found that when I put it in the boot, it actually raised my ankles up, which helped with um, the problem of pressure here a little bit. So that's definitely something to try. But back to the lugs, there's a harder, more dense panel here. And this is one of the key areas that um, shoes tend to wear down and boots as well. 
Um, so this just helps give that area a little head start um, so it doesn't start getting bare here if you're doing some really extreme terrain where the shoe is really getting beat up. In terms of the tread pattern, um, they have made the lugs a little bit more chevron shape now. So they grip well going up hills and then it's the opposite direction on the back. So when you're going down, it'll grip as well. And then they've also added some texture for the new um, AT all-terrain sole where you can just see there's some like fine nibs here. And when the ground is wet, this can help a lot. They do have good grip. You can see that it really holds onto my hand when I'm trying to drag it across the lugs, the rubber. And then because there's a lot of space in here, it works well on soft ground too. So it lives up to the name of all terrain. I would say the only terrain that I really don't like it for is kind of like roads where it's just flat and you don't really need something this thick. You know, that's where the original Primus Trek, I think would be a little more versatile. And they do have the sole on some of their other boots, which I really like it. You know, if you're just looking for something that's a bit more casual, you know, there's more flexibility, obviously less protection, but it's nice if you're not on super rocky, you know, backpacking train all the time. In terms of alternatives, this is the Vivo Barefoot Magna FG. This is my all time favorite barefoot shoe for hiking. And honestly, just using it for casual and pretty much everything because it has a really nice slip in upper. So you can whip it on and off very quickly. I've been using it as a work boot going in and out to work on my van build um, because I usually take my shoes off when I go inside, you know, so I'm like tracking in mud and stuff, you know, both for the van and for the house. So I constantly have to take this boot on and off. It works really well. It's got a good amount of protection. It's not quite as um, protective as the tracker leather. Um, so it has a little more flexibility, but also a nice wide toe box and some good flex as well because the leather is a bit softer. You've got the grommets up here, and then this is a wool blend collar, which is really nice because it's breathable. You've also got these ribs here, which help with airflow as well. So another good one that's um, nice for all season, even though it's slightly higher, it's also like the tracker leather, um, very breathable compared to super high cut boots that have you know thicker collars that kind of trap the heat a little bit. The sole is a millimeter thicker, it's 5.5 millimeters, so there is a lot of good flex. Like I said, for the original Primus Trek, this is probably one of my favorite soles because it's so versatile for walking on pavement and gravel and mud. If you're on like a super muddy hill, the lugs aren't that deep, so they can get a little bit slippery, but otherwise it's a super versatile boot and you can do just about anything in it. For cooler weather, this is the Zero Denver. They have the canvas, which is this one. They also have a leather version. Um, the toe box is, it's actually quite wide, but it does get a little more slim just towards the tip. So if you're on the edge, you might want to size up. Um, but both the leather and the canvas versions have a good amount of stretch. So you get a lot of room in there. It's a very flexible boot, um, even more so than the Magna FG. And so even though it's like mid cut, it doesn't feel like a mid cut boot, you know, cause there's just very little um, limitation on how you can move. Um, this sole is 5.5 millimeters, so it's uh, the same as the Magna FG, but a little bit thinner than the Tracker Leather Low. And it has a similar tread where it's really durable, has some good density to it, protective, but then they've split it, you know, for a little bit more flexibility. Um, and then they also have the similar chevron shaped lugs, which can help going up and down hills. But like I said, it's nice for cooler weather because there is a little bit of lightweight insulation in there. Finally, for summer hiking when it's hotter, this is the Vibram V-Track. It has a wool blend upper, which is really breathable, but it's also pretty tough. You know, it's got some good density to it. Very flexible, really comfortable. I like the height, you know, cause you get a little bit more protection if it's slightly cooler um, as well. So there's, you know, more of a temperature range but it's not so high that it's getting hot um, in the summer. You've got a wide toe box, but because of the toes, it's really extra wide because they can pretty much splay out as wide as you need them. And I love the feeling of a toe shoe because you get the separate movement, separate sensation from each of the toes, and it makes for a really agile hiking shoe, also trail running. Um, the sole is four millimeters, so it's the thinnest of the ones we've looked at, but as most people know, Vibram is extremely tough, um, so, you get a lot of protection as well. There's some good grip when the shoe bends um, because they've cut it vertically, they've cut it horizontally, which obviously helps with flexibility, but also a little bit more grippiness going up and down hills. If you're going down super steep hills, you probably want something more like the Tracker Leather Low, but for everything else, it gets you by in terms of protection and grip. The only thing I don't like about this shoe is because of the separate toes, because of the thinner material, it just will not work for colder weather, especially when it's wet because the water will just come straight up through here. All right, so that's my first impression review, the Vivo Barefoot Tracker Leather Low and Friends, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can shop with the referral links down below. Browse and filter more products with the shoe finder tool, my website, Barefoot 
barefootwear.org or watch my zero drop transition video to learn more about barefooting. Finally, if you have a question about the Vivo Barefoot Tracker Leather Low or about barefoot shoes in general, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace.